My name is Catherine, and I'm so happy to have you here. Um, you can think of me as your wedding planner without paying so much money. I will be here every step of the way to help you with your pl wedding planning journey. So if you're just, um, you just got engaged, if you are interested in wedding planning, or if you just love everything weddings, then you are in the right place because I am going to be helping you plan the perfect wedding. So, um, just a little bit of background about me is I got engaged in January of 2020 and shortly after the engagement, I was able to pick um, the venue and the date, which is April 24th of 2021. And since then, I have been planning the wedding um, without a wedding planner and just been doing this on my own and I have learned so much on the way so I would like to help you with your wedding planning. The big wedding is coming up and your family, your parents, your mom is asking you when's the day, when's the day and you don't even know what your vision is. So today I'm just going to be starting with the beginning of wedding planning. There is so much to talk about and so much to go over that this cannot all fit in one video. So this video is just going to be what to do when you get engaged just to get started. First tip for you is um, thinking about your timeline. So when do you want your wedding? Do you want a winter wonderland? Do you want a spring um, soiree or, um, you know, with beautiful flowers? Do you want a fall romantic wedding or maybe you want a summer wedding? So depending on when, when you get engaged, think about how long you want your engagement to be. Ours is about 15 months and maybe even 16 months. To me, it's the perfect time because it's long enough to get everything prepared and you're not feeling rushed on anything, but it's up to you if you want a shorter engagement, go for it. Um, just be ready to prepare um, everything very close together. I was kind of able to, you know, work on a couple things every month to work on it. Um, so yeah, think of your timeline. When do you want to get married? If you have specific dates in mind, write them down and check. I, I checked to make sure that our date didn't align with any holidays like Easter or Christmas unless you want to get married on one of those weekends but um, just make sure the weekend is not a holiday weekend if you're not planning on doing a specific theme for your wedding. If you want to do a specific season and you don't have a specific date then that is perfectly okay because then you have the ability to go to the vendors and see what their availability is. Um, that's my twin sister got engaged and that's what she did. She based it on when she wanted to get married and um, they just found their, the availability. If you really love a, a venue, that's the best way to get the venue that you love because, um, you know, venues do get booked up a lot in advance and you want to be prepared if they don't have that date. Once you have the date or at least a season in mind, you can move on and to the second task that I want you to do, and that is to set a wedding budget. So the big thing about weddings is they, are, they can be very expensive, and depending on your budget, you're going to want to prioritize different things. So I found that the biggest... Um, purchase that you'll be making is for the venue and for the food and drinks. So that is going to account for the majority of your budget, which to me, I was so surprised. But you do need to know that most venues and most catering companies have um, minimums. So if you book with a caterer and they say, in the contract that you have to reach a certain amount of money, then you have to reach that amount when you're planning your meals and drinks, or you'll just have to pay the extra amount. 
So check every contract when you're looking at them because you just never know. So when starting the budget, look up the average cost of a wedding in your area because they differ so much. If you're planning a wedding in New York City, it's going to be different than planning a wedding in North Carolina where I'm planning a wedding, but it can also vary by the city. So pl plan accordingly because bigger cities tend to have bigger minimums, they have more extravagant prices, and you're going to be paying top dollar for the services. So whether you choose a small town or a big city, picking a budget and sticking to it is the best thing that you can do for the wedding planning. So taking into account all the vendors. So do you want a photographer? Do you want flowers? Do you want, obviously you're going to need food and drinks. Do you want a cake? Um, there's so many different vendors that could, you could possibly book and you're going to need to start a list of all those vendors and then start looking up the average prices for those vendors. And like I said, it does vary by the city that you live in. Find ways to save. So just a couple ways that you could, um, you know, when looking at the budget is thinking about what your biggest priority is. My wedding is in the spring, so I wanted to spend um, a good amount on flowers, and I also thought a photographer was really important because I didn't think that I would have a videographer. So with that in mind, I was thinking, okay, besides the food and drinks in the venue, I want to spend more on the flowers and the photographer than maybe the cake. So think about, make a list of everything that you're going to want for your wedding and start looking up those prices. And um, those prices are just where you start at and make a budget. So that budget does need to have a little cushion room because you never know what you're going to expect. Um, when you're planning a wedding, there's always going to be some um, extra charges or taxes involved. So work with the people that are helping you with your wedding and make sure that the budget fits your needs because you don't have to spend $50,000 to have an amazing wedding. You need to make sure that the wedding budget fits your needs and doesn't fit the, the mold if you don't want it to. Yeah, so my final tip, this is just my first video, so there will be tons of more tips, tricks, hints. Um, this is just the first video to get started. So one of the first things that my fiance and I did is we actually were looking at who we wanted to invite to the wedding. So if you want to start with family, start there and work your way out. So. With family involved, it can be a little tricky because, for example, my fiance's family, he has about 80 cousins, so he has a huge family, and we couldn't have a 400-person wedding. So in that case, we just had to invite the aunts and uncles. Um, so you need to make sure that the guest list aligns with your budget because it does go up in price based on the number of people that you plan on inviting. So when making the list, I would start with talking to your fiance, maybe even making a list separately at first, depending if you have the same friends, you can do it together. Um, in my case, we made the list separately and the lists were based on our family and our friends that we wanted to invite. And once you have the lists, go to your fiance and you can go through who you invited and see if there's anyone that we forgot, is there anyone we need to add, and think about the number. So you could make a goal, and we kind of had that from the beginning. Um, we thought the wedding would be about 100 people and, um, you can think about it, about 80 to 90% of the people that you invite will come. If it's pre-COVID times, I don't know how it's going to be in April, but 
when you're planning, you can invite a little more than you expect to make it, but don't go inviting everyone because you don't, it, you pay per person. So just be ready to pay that amount. So we set for 100 people, we have about 125 people that we are inviting and it ended up being about equal. It's not always going to be equal, but if you could try to work with your fiance just to make sure that everyone they want to invite and everyone you want to invite is on the list. So another big part of making the guest list is doing your plus ones because you don't know, um, maybe you, you have a friend and they have a girlfriend that you don't know as well. You want to say, okay, whether or not we're going to invite plus ones. We decided to invite plus ones that we knew at the time when we were making the list. So, you know, a year out when you're making the list, um, the plus ones that we could invite were our cousins, significant others, our friends, significant others, alongside our groomsmen and um, bridesmaids, significant others. And so that leads me to my last point, which is you need to choose who is going to be in your wedding. So if it's going to be a wedding party of, you know, maybe five bridesmaids and groomsmen or two bridesmaids and groomsmen, it's up to you. Or if you don't want any bridesmaids and groomsmen, that's fine. Um, you just need to choose the number in your wedding party and give them a plus one. I feel like that's the best thing that you can do because they are going to do so much for you over this engagement that the least you can do is have their significant other or friend with them just to make them feel more comfortable the day of. So those are my tips. If you have just gotten engaged and you just wanted to get a head start, those are the first three things that I would do to get started. Make your timeline and pick your budget, choose your budget and stick to the budget and also make the guest list. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please put them as comments down below and hit the subscribe button so that you can watch more wedding content and learn more about wedding planning.